Hello, my name is Dr. Kimberly Parrott. I am 48 years old and I am a breast cancer survivor. I'm a native Louisianian. I have been in Houston since 1996. I am married and the mother of two children. I'm a lifelong educator, uh, professionally and personally, and I'm a believer. A little bit about my breast cancer journey. In 2007, I had a self-exam and I noticed that something was different, but transparently I ignored it. Throughout that year, I went to the doctor for different reasons and I asked each doctor, could you, could you check this out? Um, after each question as relates to what's going on, I was told that, you know, upon the initial examination, it didn't feel like it was anything significant. They thought it was a cyst. But I noticed throughout that year that what was nothing began to grow. February of 2008, I decided to go to my OBGYN and say, you know, I'm still a little concerned. My parents and my family thought that I should continue to seek some type of answer as, as it relates to what I was feeling in my body. So after that, my physician at the time referred me to a breast surgeon. The breast surgeon did a needle biopsy, came back and said, we don't think it's anything. We think that it's a cyst. However, I continued to urge because I was uncomfortable because as I stated, I felt that it grew. At that time, she decided that it was best if we had a lumpectomy, which was just to remove the growth and then send it to pathology. When she removed it, she assured me, I really don't think it's anything. However, days later, I got a phone call, that dreaded phone call, that we want you to come into the office. At that time, I was thinking, I have too much to do. Maybe we can schedule an appointment later. However, her tone changed and she said very transparently, no, you need to come today. And it was at that time, she looked me in my eyes and she said, you have breast cancer. I didn't want to believe it, so I told her to say it again, which she did. You have breast cancer. She also told me at that time, she felt that it was very aggressive. She was very transparent that the journey that I was about to go on was going to be difficult. After that, two and a half weeks later, I had a nine hour surgery. I had a double mastectomy. I had my lymph nodes removed. And shortly after, I started my journey with chemo. And it was a journey. I also went through several surgeries to have reconstruction, to have my port put in, to have my port taken out. And I also had difficulties along the way. Months later, I had an infection which landed me in the hospital for two and a half weeks and I was in ICU. After having a double mastectomy and having my lymph nodes removed, I went through chemotherapy treatment and I had to have multiple reconstruction surgeries. I was tired, I was overwhelmed, and I was frustrated. The day that I found out I had breast cancer, I was told that the likelihood of me having any more children was probably not gonna happen and that I was extremely ill. I had multiple surgeries, multiple treatments, and I wanted to give up a lot, but I didn't. In the middle of that, I went to the doctor and they said that they found something else in my blood. I didn't want them to find anything else, but that blood test revealed that I was pregnant. Yeah, I was shocked too. I was told also because of my medical history and because of the amount of surgeries I've had and treatment I had that the likelihood of that pregnancy um, going full term was also slim. However, I didn't want to believe that either. So I decided to suspend any more treatment and to take my chances with my pregnancy. And seven and a half months later, I gave birth. It was difficult. He was a preemie and I was still very sick. So after my surgery, um, after my pregnancy and after I gave birth, I had additional surgeries as related to my breast cancer. And eventually, the doctors felt that after all the surgeries and all the treatment, that I was in remission. I mentioned earlier that I'm a believer. I grew up as a pastor's daughter believing that God can do anything and he makes no mistakes, but quite honestly, I was angry. I did not ask for this. I didn't want this. It stood in the way of everything that I had planned and I didn't understand. Transparently, also, I was going through a very rough time in my marriage and I felt alone. I felt isolated and I felt frustrated. Immediately, I began to think of all the things that's associated with breast cancer. I'm going to lose my hair. I'm going to lose my breast. People are going to look at me differently. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be tired. I didn't ask for this. And during my journey, quite honestly, I was angry a lot. 
But at one point, I began to accept the fact that I was handpicked. It's not something that I wanted to be handpicked for, but for whatever reason, God saw fit that I could handle this journey. And then I realized how humbled I was, that I had the opportunity to show people that breast cancer isn't necessarily a, a death sentence, that it's a journey, and that I can advocate differently. Because I'm an African-American female, there are a lot of statistics that are out there that we don't know. A lot of times, just like me, people think that when they hear breast cancer, they don't see someone that's funny or that life goes on, or that even after losing your hair and your breast, that you're still beautiful. And so as that journey grew, even going through it in the middle of a pregnancy, I realized that I had a choice to be angry or I can be an advocate. Uh, some days I kind of interchanged between those things, but my emotions eventually grew to a point that I was grateful. I wasn't just grateful because he healed my body. I wasn't just grateful because I withstood gruesome chemo treatments. I wasn't grateful because my hair came back. I wasn't grateful because I didn't have to go to the doctor anymore. I was grateful that I experienced that and that now being on the other side, that I'm a walking, living, human, breathing evidence that you can get through it. What did the diagnosis do to my self-confidence? I would say it caused me to have a different type of self-confidence. I have a long-standing Friday hair appointment since I've had hair, I think. <laughs> so um, I remember that, honestly, some of the questions that my doctor didn't anticipate being asked was like, well, what about my hair appointment? It's like, where does that fall into you having breast cancer? Because like most women, I attached my beauty and my identity to my outer appearance. And now that I didn't have hair, I had to now create another identity or so I thought. And so my self-confidence shifted. Um, I was even more intentional and I was bald. I didn't wear anything on my head. I didn't wear a scarf or a wig. Um, I live in Houston, so it's hot. So that was a benefit. But I found myself being intentional to prove to people that although I had some um, outer evidence that I was going through treatment, that I was still Kimberly. I was very intentional to be confident. And the days that I didn't feel healthy, I, I rest and I reflected on um, not only who I was, but whose I was. My then husband was with me the day I d got diagnosed and I could tell that he didn't have, um, he was emotionless. But the big part was me having to tell my parents. And I remember just calling my father and I said, Daddy, I have breast cancer. And there was silence. And I said, did you hear what I said? I have breast cancer. And he said, okay. And I said, do you want me to tell mama or you could just tell her what I just said? And um, after that, I can hear my parents' intention of not showing me their emotion, but I felt it. Um, I told my friends just as bluntly and transparently, but the one thing I was very adamant about is that I did not want people to treat me as if I was sick. And then I had that best friend look at me and say, but you are. You're so good at taking care of everything and taking care of everyone, but this may not be the time for you to do that. And so I went back and forth many times, feeling as if just mentioning the words that I had cancer was also saying that I'm giving up my, um, my ability to be um, independent. But I realized that some journeys are created so that you can create space for people to be there for you. I mentioned earlier that I was angry. And I mentioned that I was a believer. So during this time, of course, my faith in God and my belief that he is a healer was um, at a different level. I heard it. I grew up hearing it and I, I know it and I saw that for other people, but I hadn't yet experienced it for myself, especially not as intimately as I experienced it through this cancer journey. But the more I depended on him because I had nobody else to depend on, the more I realized that I was stronger than what I thought I was. Um, I would definitely say that this cancer journey has and continues to cause me to realize very, very significantly that my strength is beyond anything that I could imagine. But it's that because it's not truly mine. It's the one that he provides me.
Some techniques I use to feel beautiful inside and out is the fact that I mentioned that I had a standing Friday hair appointment. I remember, uh, even being bald, that my stylist called me and she said, Kimberly, you missed your appointment. Me questioning her sanity at this point was like, what are you talking about? She said, well, you have an appointment. And I came in and she put me in the chair. She put a cape on me and she rubbed my head and she washed it. And she was like, okay, and gave me a full stylist treatment. She said, see you next week. So I had to identify those things that I had before cancer that brought me joy. The advice I have for other women who have recently been diagnosed with breast cancer is accept the truth. Say the words, I have cancer. Say them as many times as you need to, to accept the fact that now you have been handpicked to go on a journey. And understand that that journey is yours. Throughout these years, I've had multiple women who knew I was a breast cancer survivor and say, tell me, tell me everything because I have it too. And the one thing that I'm very transparent in telling them is that their journey is theirs. Just like my journey was mine. Even if you have the same diagnosis, same stage, same, same treatment, it is their journey. Own the emotions. No one can tell you, oh, I know exactly how you feel. Even other survivors, because they don't, because it is your journey. Own the emotions. Understand the journey. Listen to your doctor. And also, get some self-education about the illness that you have. Understand that you have to be very deliberate and intentional about your health. Be honest about not feeling it. Know the people that you can talk to. Understand what triggers. Understand you'll have some ups and some downs. But even though you may not have asked for this journey, embrace it and be honest about it. As a cancer survivor, I'm more intentional about living each moment to the fullest. It's important to remember that I didn't survive so much to waste time on so little. I'm very intentional about the relationships I establish. I'm very intentional about my health. I'm intentional about being an advocate in all ways. I'm intentional about being an example for people who think that this is the end or to think that this is going to change their life. It will, without a shadow of a doubt. I often tell people that I wonder what I was doing on February 19th. February 19th is the day before I heard you have cancer. And I reflect on that because if I knew on February 20th I was gonna hear those words, what would I have done differently on February 19th? I live by that because today is everybody's February 19th. Tomorrow is not promised. You don't know. We're one phone call away from our life changing forever. So because I am a survivor, I'm very intentional about realizing the impact that I have today and making sure that I can share that with others.